We have a giant pile of maps that tell a bunch of different stories about the Grand Canyon. And over the past several months, we've been conducting research into not only the history of the Grand Canyon, but the history of how the Grand Canyon was mapped. We have pictorial illustrated maps that show kind of cartoonish caricatures of the Grand Canyon. We have geologic maps, topographic maps, historical exploratory maps. You can get lost in looking at patterns and shapes. They're just captivating. And then when you really start to appreciate what goes into making maps, there's an entire scientific, intellectual lineage of admirable explorers who risk their lives just to collect raw data about where things are. No one knows the Grand Canyon, and that's, that's, a, that's a bold argument to make, especially if you're trying to make that to explorers and rafters and hikers, but it's true. Uh, even the most seasoned canyon adventurers have seen only a fraction of the Grand Canyon. That's just because it's so vast. You can spend a lifetime hiking through it or rafting through it. Only approximately 10% of Grand Canyon visitors even see the north rim of the Grand Canyon, much less the entire western segment. Even talking about the Grand Canyon as one single entity is in itself a bit misleading. All of these maps are really just layers of data packaged onto paper. And of course, paper is not the only medium on which a map could be produced. Increasingly, maps are digital and born digital, and uh, maps are now often web-based interactive dynamic maps. Maps allow us to, to simplify and make space cohesive and, and unify space, but that map will be far more effective in communicating information about that space if people want to look at it, if it's appealing aesthetically.